Yo, DJ, drop that funky beat. Hello, and welcome back to the Automox CISO IT podcast. I'm your host, Jason Kikta, and I'm the CISO here at Automox. Today, we're going to talk about top ways the CISOs advocate for automation maturity. And this is a subject that's near and dear to my heart because I think it's often overlooked by security professionals and IT professionals just how much uh, this can do to really improve your security game, uh, not to mention, obviously, fantastic IT outcomes come from uh, adopting automation and increasing its use throughout your organization. But there are some really uh, important security imperatives that can be met as well. So let's dive right into it. The the first thing that I would say is, you know, when you break down security, as we've talked about on previous podcasts, when you break down security to its uh, most straightforward elements, like what are you really talking about? You're really talking about, you know, finding anomalies uh, in your network, uh, and and you know, so it's it's that anomaly detection, and then you know, tuning is the art of weeding out the false positives uh, so that, you know, you can find that tr true positive and then obviously you have to respond to it and mitigate it and so on and so forth. But, you know, that detection piece is really, really critical on the front end. And I think that uh, sometimes it's easy to overlook how much of that, uh, you know, can really challenge your security posture because, you know, if you're struggling with a lot of false positives, uh, you know, if you're having trouble finding the signal and the noise and weeding out uh, the things that you don't care about so you can get to the things that you do, you know, that's really going to impact your security team's ability to find out what's going on and do something about it uh, in a timely manner, right? Most intrusions that I've seen, um, can be stopped in the early stages with really good detection. But, you know, the the challenge is uh, computers are largely deterministic machines. <laughs> there are obviously things like uh, AI models are a bit more stochastic, but, you know, computers are deterministic, meaning given a, a specified set of inputs, you're going to get a, you know, pretty reliably solid set of outputs. Uh, but humans... We add a little more chaos into the mix, right? Both from the aspect of, hey, humans program computers, we design computers, we make mistakes uh, in there, and, and there are ways and techniques that uh, hardware manufacturers and software vendors try to minimize those. But the single biggest no noise point on any network is going to be your users. Your users generate a lot of noise. Your users generate a lot of anomalous signals that you know you're going to pick up on uh you know in the course of every business day and anyone who's ever done any level of detection engineering will uh <laughs> not not only agree but probably give you their own personal soliloquy on just how challenging this can be and so adding in automation uh to your IT processes uh, really cuts down on that human error, right? It gives you those uniform outcomes that are predictable and reliable. Uh, and by doing that, you have a much better sense of what you need to detect it on and what, uh, you know, what is, you know, different from baseline, right? Like what is that, that signal that's coming through the noise? Well, if you lower the noise floor, that signal becomes much clearer. And so, um, you know, I think that far and away is is a, a huge reason to really focus on automation. And again, it, it's not just the IT side of the house that should be in favor of it. You know, your security team, CISOs like I, like myself, like we should deeply be in favor of it because uh, it, it just really adds a, a lot of reliability to the the patterns going on inside the network. But it's not the only reason, you know, an, another big one is, uh, you know, speed of response, like we just talked about a minute ago, speed of response is critical. And that automation creates opportunities to have a much better response. And, and, and 
probably response is even a bit narrowly scoped because it also improves the proactive measures you can take. I, I think when I look back at how security has changed over the last several years, uh, really even like just the last three years alone, um, you know, it's it's a much different landscape. It is a different landscape than it was even just three years ago. Um, but the uh, speed and uh, scope and, um, uh, you know, impact of follow-on actions of these mass exploitation events is just really, really ramped up, right? And I think, you know, we, it's it's something that the internet's, really had a long history with, right? You know, if you think about worms, obviously going back to the Morris worm and I think 1981, early 80s, you know, that was a, you know, pivotal, I, I want to call it a pivotal like watershed moment for the internet, but part of me feels like maybe that's not the right approach because uh, I, I'm not sure that we learned any fantastic lessons out of it. But, you know, when you look back at the, worms 20 years ago uh that spread across the internet when when you know most of the populace was on the internet uh for the first time or or still in our early days you know it was just it was mind-blowing uh how much around the turn of the millennium it you know how much damage could be caused uh by these worms of you know code red nimda uh i love you anna kornikova like those were those are seared into my memory trying to respond to, um, you know, those worms spreading across the internet. And I think they got everyone's attention. And then obviously later on things like not patch and want to cry brought it back into our consciousness, but, you know, self propagating worms still remain the exception rather than the rule. When we talk about mass exploitation and most of the time, what we're talking about is being able to take an exploit turn it around rapidly and and weaponize it and then fire it off against a you know large number of viable targets and probably the best in the world today still remains uh crypto miners you know they're just so very fast but you know honestly when they get into your network um it's almost a a help because you can be sure that state actors and ransomware actors aren't far behind and none of them are going to tolerate uh, being co co-located uh, with a crypto miner. And so if, if, if that's all you got, uh, you know, pay the bill, be happy and move on. But, um, you know, we've had these events, Log4j being like the most dramatic, uh, but they just keep happening again and again where there is some, uh, you know, recently breaking vulnerability that is undergoing mass public exploitation and your ability to identify vulnerable nodes in your network, especially on the public facing side, but even internal as well, uh, because, you know, it's, it's, it's not like that will, uh, you know, a perimeter will keep them out forever. Um, you know, you got to be able to find that and you got to be able to respond quickly. And so things like proactively patching, proactively uh, changing uh, configurations to either mitigate it or make yourself less vulnerable. Those are extremely important and, and cannot be understated with their security impact. But I think it also gives you, uh, you know, using automation, it, it gives you those opportunities on the, uh, response side as well, right? The post incident or mid incident, um, response. If you have automated processes, you can really, do some innovative things with your security response. You know, back in my time uh, in the Marine Corps, when I was on active duty in that cyber command, we did this, uh, this exercise and we wrote up the scenario and, and just had this really, really detailed scenario. And we were going to, uh, you know, we, we sat down and basically did essentially a table read, right? Where, okay, we have a scenario and we're going to go through all of the, the exercise injects. And here's what we're going to inject at this point. At this point, here's going to be, these are going to be time-based. These are going to be conditions-based. And talking about how the the network defenders that we were training, how we wanted them to think about their security posture and how we wanted them to, you know, detect and respond. And 
as we were going through it, you know, I was, I was sort of red teaming it a bit of saying like what I wanted to be able to, to, you know, what I was going to do in response to these, uh, to these exercise stimuli. And so someone starts reading it off and I'm like, oh, I'm going to, you know, change this. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change this. I'm going to make it really hard for them to get around my network. And <laughs> it, it kind of stopped the conversation cold for a minute while everyone processed it. And the initial thought was like, my goodness, like this, this would shut down an adversary, right? Being able to just change these major characteristics within your network on the fly um, would really befuddle any actor, no matter how advanced in the network of like, hey, like IP space moved, things got locked down, you know, things had were on tighter timeouts, just like everything, all the friction that you could think of was was put into the network. It wasn't shut down, but it was just made such a, a um, you know, challenging operating environment that, you know, it would have overcome their game plan. Uh, but you know, then reality quickly set in of like, hey, Jason, how confident are, are you that, you know, you'd actually be able to make those technical changes in any sort of relevant time? And that's where I had to cop to, well, I'd like to be able to do it, but we don't really actually have the tools to do any of that. Because at the time, DOD uh, had not made much of an investment in automation. It was still, you know, largely human driven process. And if there's one thing, DOD is never short on its uh, people. So that's, obviously not the the situation in industry and it's also not where the state of the art is today you know today we have a lot of automation and so you can think about not just those proactive things that you do like patching and configuration and the reactive things that you do for um to deal with a, a, a specific threat but you can also think about your response and you know are there things that your IT department can do to help the security team um, be able to better respond to a threat to isolate uh, an actor into a given area to you know slow them down as they move through your network and improve your ability to uh, find them are there things that you can find right can you you know do you have the ability to automate, you know, pulling certain logs and sending them to a safe storage area? You know, how quickly can you do that? And of course, you know, like always with any security measure, have you rehearsed it? Uh, so that's, I would say, my second big aspect of uh, the importance of automation for security. The third one is that, you know, it, it it's something of an efficiency argument, but it's it's you know again from a security perspective is that you know computers were invented for a reason and they're very very powerful and they're good at things that humans are not good at right they're good at scale they're good at rep repetition they're good at precision um, whereas humans are good at characteristically different things right leaps of intuition understanding uh, experience right? Adapting an experience to a new set of circumstances, that's something that humans do well and that computers have trouble with, even with AI, right? When we look at the current state of AI, it's impressive how far we've come and large language models are probably the most um, impressive implementation that we've seen yet, but they, you know, they only go so far, right? They, the it, it's hilarious to watch AI fails where, you know, it makes a meme and we, we were having some fun today with AI generated memes uh, in our security team. And we were, we were generating some of them and I was laughing at how many of them were turned out with just nonsense words. Some weren't even words, some weren't even letters. Right. But it would get the image right. And it would have text at the top and the bottom and understood that, but it had no idea. The, the model had no idea what it should put for the text. It couldn't think of anything witty because like that's not how its artificial cognition works. And while those uh while AI and and those use cases for AI will improve over time, uh they're not there today. And so anytime that you can rely on automated systems to do things at scale, uh things that need repetition, things that need a high degree of precision, you should absolutely do that because that frees up 
the human beings on both your security and IT team to focus on those security tasks. Again, whether this is, you know, pr straight up preventative, it's reactive to a major incident or whether it's during a response itself. And it's certainly valuable during the mitigation phase. You know, I think that something that we discount too often because it's something we've all heard, but because it's so obvious, we don't always live in our day to day is that security demands a degree of perfection. Uh, it's, it's not fair. It's not how I wish things to be, but you know, if you patch 99 out of a hundred vulnerable systems, uh, and that one system is still vulnerable and it's still exposed, then you're probably still going to get breached, even though you had a 99% success rate, because that's just, that's just the nature, uh, of, of security. And so, you know, having an automation in place where you know for a fact whatever you've implemented, whether it be, you know, a, a, a mitigation, mitigating configuration or whether it be a security patch or something else, you know that that's been implemented and you know it's been implemented for each and every one. And if one of them fails, you know, you'll get back an error and be able to then go track that down and find out what's going on with that system. But, you know, that really, really helps your security process uh, on a deep and meaningful level. And it, it, it just shouldn't be underestimated, even though, again, it's something that that's old hat to, to many of us who've been doing it for a while. So anyhow, uh, that's, uh, that's my pitch uh, as a CISO uh, to all of you on why you should, um, you know, really take um, automation and having a mature approach an organizational approach to, to automation very seriously. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed it and uh, I will see you next time. Stay safe out there on the internet. Thanks. Bye.